We're going to be looking at how to program the Kentucky Starter Bot, and this is going to be a little bit of a basic video. So if you're in a more advanced team, this might be a little bit of a review, but we're going to try to help those new teams sort of get a leg up. So when I have it built, I'm going to try to give each of my motors a name that relate to somewhat of what either it does, like the claw motor here, or its location on the robot. And that's just going to help when I'm programming know where the motor is on the bot. I also think it's really useful to take a piece of tape and just tape on the name and the motor port and also find something to set this up on so the wheels um, don't cause the road to roll off the table. It's very common for new teams to do that where um, I program it to go autonomously for three seconds and it's sitting up on a table and it rolls right off. Uh, so just be aware that lifting those is a positive thing. So my port selection, typically what I like to do is I like to take my left side of the robot and I put all one through five and the right side of my robot, all six through 10. It just makes it to where I can find things quicker and it's a little bit more organized in my mind. And there's some other strategic advantages to that but we're not gonna get into today. So if I go into my competition template, so I'm in robot C and I'm gonna go in, go file, new, and we'll pull out a competition template. It's gonna open up and there's gonna be a lot of um, comments in it. And so like all these green letters and numbers and everything like that are all comments. And what that means is it's invisible to the code. And so it actually doesn't see this. So the code starts here with information. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to look at this and set up my code effectively. And so this is broken into a couple different areas. So in this, we've got a pragma motors and sensors set up, a pre-autonomous functions, an autonomous task, and a user control. And what that pretty much means is that my pragma motors is information about my robot. So understanding where a motor's connected or understanding how this sensor works is a big deal to the robot, and it helps us coding it later on. The pre-autonomous, most new teams will not utilize this. It's for turning things on uh, and starting tasks. So if you have like a LCD screen, when you get up there, you're gonna turn on this location so it's on at the very beginning. Your autonomous is gonna be your movement without the robot, and your user control is gonna be your movement with the robot. So when we get in there, we're gonna go into our motion sensor setup, which we're gonna see in a second. And we're gonna click on that, and it's gonna open up this dialog window, to develop the pragma. So let's go in. So if I go here and I go to motors and sensor setup, I'm gonna add in like a three wire motor here and I'm gonna type this in as a left uh, front motor. Oop. And I'm gonna select whether or not it's reverse or not. Select apply, okay. And it automatically develops this for me. Now if I need to go back into it, I can click in there and it will open it back up for me, which is really kind of useful. The other thing to know is that when I'm coding later on, if I compile this, what will happen is it'll list as a red letter. And so what that means is that this language knows that word. And so it makes it kind of nice, which we'll see in a moment. So the reason here, so I've gone through and I've added in each of my motors right here. The reason we have a couple selected as reversed and a couple not is because when I'm going forward on in a car, I've got like my left side wheels will all go clockwise, my right side wheels will all go counterclockwise. And so if I reverse a couple, what I can do is I can set 127 as my full speed forward, and I just have to set that for both sides and not have like a positive and a negative. It just makes things a little bit easier to read when we're writing our code. So to start our first code, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our robot lift up this cone and set up on the stationary goal. And so we've written something here called pseudocode, and this is just sort of shorthand for what I want to do. And new teams, it's really important to sort of start with this because it makes life easier for you. So I'm gonna wanna grab the cone first, because if you build this, this way, it's not with an 18, so to grab it, we're gonna have to go out of 18 to grab. I'm gonna lift the arm up. I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna stop moving forward. I'm gonna drop the arm. I'm gonna release the claw. And so every robot's gonna be a little bit different with the time that everything goes here because your battery is gonna cause some issues. Um, but we can play with this and get pretty good shape with it. So in my pseudocode, I'm gonna have that relate to different sections of my code. So I feel like grab cone, lift arm, move forward, all the way down. And the reason that is, is that it just helps me keep this organized. I also, I can like multi-process this at the same time 
and I'm not doing that yet because I just feel this is a little bit easier uh, to get it to work and have earlier success. So in this, I'm going to go in, I'm going to tell it motor. I'm going to specify what motor. I'm going to set equal to a power value. So like our full speed is 127. Our negative full speed is negative 127. And zero is stop. And so I'm saying this one full speed forward. I'm delaying it for half a second. And what that means is that we're just not doing anything. So it's, it's running at 127 for a half second until this code runs. It doesn't mean that it stops after a half second. It just means that it won't read the next code until then. And so my next code is for it to stop. If I don't have this, it will just continually like push and push and push and push. My next part is going to be my lifting my arm. And so I've got my left lift motor and my right lift motor are both set to 127. Since I reverse the right side, it works out. I've got a value for it to lift of one second. I don't know if that is the right amount for you or the too long or too short, so you'll have to adjust that. And then I've got a hold up arm. And so if you've got a lot of rubber bands on it or you've got a lot of counterweights, you can lift up your arm and have it balance. Um, if you don't have that, you're gonna have to um, Put voltage up there to hold the arm up while you actually put like while you're actually moving forward and so you're gonna have to have a little bit of voltage on it and this number is gonna have to fluctuate with just er everything else so you're gonna have to play with this 40 and 40. we're then going to move forward so these are all my base motors all at 127 for the amount of time this is just um one and a half seconds so it's hundreds of a second or sorry thousands of a second we're going to stop moving and then we're going to drop our arm, so I've got negative 163. I don't do full speed just because it's going to drop pretty quick either way. And I do it for a quarter of a second, and then I'm going to release my claw, and then delay for a half a second, and then stop all my motors. So that's the basic of it. You're going to have to play a lot with the numbers and the delays, but let's see real quick how to do that in the software. And so if I'm here and I'm in my autonomous, I'm going to go over here to motors variables and I'm just gonna bring a motor in I've got to get rid of this now and right in this spot notice that my since I've compiled the program and it's a known word now it goes right there and so I can start typing my left motor and push enter and it will populate for me and I'm gonna set that equal to 127 and then put a semicolon oh semicolon all right, and then I can go in and add my delay, which is in millisecond. And so, like, I'm going to put in 1,000, and that really just means one second. And that just allows the language to not have to use a decimal point and be more precise. So I'm going to go through and add all that in. So that's my Thomas. Now let's look at my user control. And the user control is going to correspond pretty closely to the remote. And so on the remote, we've got these random numbers here, which are really referring to the channels on the remote. And so like we have channel two, which is moving forward and backward. And this is like a dimmer switch. So this is like really dark, and then we move it back, and then it's like really light. And all it's doing is it's changing the resistant value there on it. And so we have that for both my left side and my right side of the chassis. And then we have these buttons up on top, which means it's sort of like a light switch where it goes always on or always off um, for both of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the same command, motor, uh, right back motor. And we're going to set that equal to vector remote channel 2, which is the one listed right here. I'm going to also do that with my other right motor for channel 2. And then I'm going to do my left motors for channel 3. And that's going to allow me, whenever I move this side, my left side of my robot goes forward. Whenever I move this side forward, my right side of the robot moves forward. When I do both, the bot moves forward. And it's called tank drive. Then what I've got is I'm going to program these buttons here to lift my arm. And this is an if statement. And so what I'm doing is I'm asking a question. Um, if my VEX remote button 6 up equals 1, so it equals pressed, I want you to set the motor to left lift motor equals 127 and right lift motor equals 127. So as long as I'm pushing that, it's lifting. Else if, so if we're not doing that, if I'm pushing my 
button six down, so this one's being pressed, I want you to go through and I want you to send both the negative so I can go full up or full down. You might want to slow these down, but that's all right. And if I'm not touching either of those, so if, else, if, else, um, I'm going to set those both to zero. I'm going to do the same thing on my other side where I've got if my Vex remote channel for five up equals one, so if it's pressed, I'm going to start turning my motor. Else if, if the bottom one's pressed, I'm going to set it to negative 127, so releasing. And else, I'm going to set my motor to equal to zero. The other thing you can do that I think will make your bot a little bit more competitive and better is you can actually set a limits on your uh, on your arm. And so when this goes up and this goes down, this is an older bot, but if we put a limit switch right there for it to press when it hits its bottom zone to stop it, and a limit switch up on the top so this arm comes around and hits another uh, limit switch, um, what it's going to do is it's going to give me better life for my motor. Because if I'm going down and this part hits that metal band, this motor is going to continue to push, 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 push until it breaks. And so if I have something stopping, it's real positive. And to do that, if I want to make it happen, I just need to take all of my lift motors and put them inside uh, this other if statement. So this becomes a nested if. But what we have is we're saying if this sensor value for top limit equals one, and this right here means or, so this or, or this sensor value for a bottom limit equals one, uh, set both my motors to zero, else just run the regular code. And what that does is it makes it to where uh, whenever this is pressed or that one's pressed, um, all the motors stop and it never sees the rest of the code. And it's just a good protectant for your robot. So here's my full code. And it's going to be pretty useful. You can zoom into that and steal it if you want or modify it. Um, let me pull up the software real quick. So if I've got this and I've got it working, what I want to do first before I really get into it is I can go into my robot and I'm going to compile and download this. All right. And you see I've got this debugger window that opens up. So it's under robot um, debugger windows. Okay. And what I can do is I can push start and stop. And what will happen is I have to push start for this to actually engage. But I can type in 127. And we'll actually start the motor turn it to 127, or I can set it to zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to know which way your motors are turning uh, right off the bat. So I can go in and sort of check to make sure they're working or something like that uh, before I ever start programming. So if I wanted to um, really optimize my motors and sensor setup, I can do so. Well, that is the basic for you. And so that should get you to where you are pretty much able to run an autonomous for programming. I think autonomous is really important for competitions because there's a lot of value and points to that. Uh, it's also going to allow you to set up to where you can program. You don't have to have every single part of a program for it to work, but that will help you out as far as getting started. Good luck!